Here's a question people ask a lot. It must be very peaceful flying gliders, right? Well, the answers are very clear, yes and no. It depends a lot on how you fly. It's kind of like skiing or snowboarding. Uh, you can come down the slope at a very relaxed speed doing very relaxed things, or you can push yourself to the edge, you know, try things that you've never tried before. It certainly seems relaxed in this video because the wind noise from the camera audio is dialed back so you hardly hear any wind noise at all. It's also more peaceful if the pilot doesn't have any concern about getting back to the airport. Here the pilot's flying along at 5,400 feet, plenty of altitude to get back to the airport that he started from. He's flying at about 50 knots, which is a, a very loafing speed, a very peaceful kind of speed. If he were trying to go somewhere, he'd be flying faster, 70 or 80 knots, that's 80 or 90 miles an hour. So in fact, this pilot is, is in fact very peaceful. He's enjoying a magnificent view. He's flying in mountain wave, and in wave, the areas of lift tend to be uh, smooth and, and uh, cover a large area, and the areas of sink uh, tend to be smooth and cover a large area. So that's another reason that this is a re relaxed kind of flying. Another way uh, to be relaxed is to let another pilot uh, do all or most of the flying in a two-seater glider. In this video, the pilot in the front seat is undergoing a flight review that's uh, required by the FAA every two years uh, under the watchful eye of the instructor in the back seat. <laughs> You can just hear how relaxed the atmosphere is in the cockpit. Just watch the hands of the pilot in the front seat now. Why do I keep seeing both of your hands in the air? tell from this that the ba glider basically tends to fly itself and it's counterproductive to fly it when you have a lot of muscle tension anywhere in your body. That's good, you got five up. The most satisfying thing for a glider pilot is to find rising air, in this case 500 feet per minute up. There's the five up just visible at the, on the Vario at right. And you can hear the dismay in her voice when the lift fizzles out. But a lot of the time it's not about being peaceful or relaxed. The glider pilot has a plan in mind, just like a skier or a snowboarder would have for coming down a particular hill. In this case, the glider pilot starts off in the upper right hand corner, uh, comes along the ridge, that's Jack's Mountain in ridge lift, and then he tries to throw up as high as he can, crosses over Stone Mountain just off to the left, and he'd really like to really like to follow that yellow dotted path over to the ridge on the far left, that's called Tussie Ridge, then he can fly in ridge lift down 50 miles to the southwest. But the thermals aren't working very well, the cloud bases aren't very high, and he ends up uh, going off to the southwest there, uh, checking out the ridge over the Racetown Dam. You see the body of water there. Um, and that doesn't work very well, so he ends up scuttling back onto Jack's Mountain where he came from because he can depend on the ridge lift working, and that way he can get back home.
This is the first part of this trip going uh, southwest on Jack's Mountain at the left, top left side of the map. Half an hour or an hour later, the pilots realize that the, the thermals aren't very good and he's taking a look toward the Raystown Ridge and the Raystown Dam or Lake, which is on the left there. That's a nice shaped ridge, but he doesn't really want to get down and ridge fly it um, because there's hardly any place to land, even though he could go a long way along that ridge. So he flies over the ridge at about 3,500 feet. That's about uh, 1,500 feet above the ridge top hoping that the wind blowing against the ridge will push some nice thermals off it, but he doesn't find any. So here he's making his last pass northwest along the Raystown Ridge, looking for thermals. He's at about 3,700 feet, and he figures that's enough altitude to get him back onto Jack's Mountain. On Jack's Mountain, he expects to find a uh, ridge lift, that is, he expects to find that the ridge is working, and then he can fly back north. Uh, northeast along Jack's Mountain and get home. That field you see up to the top left, uh, by the way, is, is a nice big field, but it's not suitable for landing because the tor corn in it is about six feet tall at this time. Now he's about halfway back to Jack's Mountain. Uh, closer to us is uh, Stone Mountain and he's going to turn and fly along Stone Mountain, still looking for uh, thermals being pushed off by the wind blowing onto the ridge from the left. He's not going to fly, uh, try to ridge fly Stone Mountain because there's no place to land on the windward side. That quarry you were just looking at isn't very hospitable. By the way, home is up there at the top left of the screen in that puddle of light that's about uh, 20 or 25 miles away. Uh, now we see Jack's Mountain on the right and the valley to the windward side of it uh, uh, going up the screen on the left and you can see that this uh, valley has fields in it so this is much more sensible to fly Jack's Mountain because those fields are present although if you go down and look at them from the road you'll see that there's a lot of ups and downs to them uh, even along the axis of the valley. So at this point it's pretty clear that uh, the pilot's plan A has worked. He's um, on back on that Jack's Mountain Ridge and in a minute we'll hear the barrier indicate that he's in some lift. The lowest he got was about 2,500 feet, and that's about two or 300 feet above the top of Jack's Mountain at this point. So he was actually pretty conservative coming back from uh, the Raystown Ridge. Plan B, of course, if, if uh, Jack's Mountain uh, Ridge was not working, was to, is to land in one of the fields in the valley, even though they have some ups and downs to them. At this point, the instruments tell the pilot that he's uh, still 18.6 miles from the home airport and that he needs to get uh, 1,484 feet worth of lift out of the ridge on the way back to make it to the airport. So back to our original question, is it uh, peaceful or tranquil? Uh, the answer is that depends a lot on whether the pilot wants it to be peaceful or tranquil. Parenthetically, when you're flying the ridge, it's better to go over the power lines than under them.